Welcome back, everybody, to Elevate and Reflect with DC. I'm your host, Dark Cancer, and today we're going to dive into a topic that affects many of us at some point in our lives, depression and self-doubt. These feelings can be incredibly overwhelming and isolating for most, but it's important to remember that you are not alone. Even in our darkest moments, there's hope and strength to be found. As someone with a biblical background, I find great comfort and wisdom in the scriptures that I read on the daily. Today we'll explore what the Bible says about these challenges and how we can apply its teachings to our lives. Let's uh, let's start with depression. It's a heavy word, and if I have to admit, an even heavier feeling. Many of us have experienced times when the weight of the world just feels like it's too much to bear. The good news is the Bible offers us solace in these moments. In the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. This verse reminds us that God is close to us, and in our suffering offers comfort and salvation. For many, it doesn't always feel that way. It feels like anything and everything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong. But know that we can take solace in the fact that despite how bad everything is, he's still right there with us, willing to help us through whatever the situation is. When we're dealing with depression, it's crucial to reach out for support. This might be through prayer, talking to a trusted friend or family member, or seeking professional help. Remember, I'm giving this from the Bible perspective, but I know that there are professional and physical stuff that you can go to to help get you started. You know, if you don't think for whatever reason that that's going to help you or the people around you who constantly tell you this aren't being helpful in that regard. And I say this because there are a lot of people out there who claim that they serve God and they pray and they act the part, but. They're just empty words. It's easy to tell someone to do something. It's harder to actually do it. So be mindful of the people around you and the ones telling you to do something. If their life doesn't show that they're actively doing it themselves, then the words coming out of their mouth are just empty shells. Okay? Now, it's important to break the silence and share our burdens with others. This part is true. As in Galatians 6, 2. It tells us that we need to bear ye one another burdens and show, I'm sorry, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We are called to support one another, to lift each other up in times of need, and to help each other through any of the difficult times that we have. Now, let's talk about self-doubt. We've all experienced those moments when we question our abilities and our worth. It's a natural part of the human experience, but it doesn't have to define us. Now, in Jeremiah 29, 11, we find reassurance in that fact, stating, For I know that the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has a plan for each of us, a plan filled with hope and purpose that Even when you don't think everything is going the way it should, everything is happening just as he planned it to happen, the way it's supposed to happen. We may diverge from that course a little bit here and there, but he can always put us back on track. You're never so far gone that you can't go back where he wants you to be. Now, when self-doubt does creep in, it's important to remember that we were created in his image and we are capable of great things. Philippians 4.13 reminds us that if that, I'm sorry, that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is a a verse and a prayer that I live by on the daily. And with faith and perseverance, we can overcome our doubts and even achieve our goals. One of the most powerful tools we have against self-doubt is gratitude. By focusing on our blessings and positive aspects of our lives, we can shift our perspective and build confidence. Take this moment, or any moment, rather, each day to reflect on what you're grateful for and you'll find that self-doubt loses its grip very quickly okay now as we navigate through life it's essential to cultivate a mindset of growth and resilience in the book of romans 5 chapter 5 verse 3 and i do believe 4 
we were reminded and noted that, and not only so, but we glorify in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work it patience. And patience and experience and experience. Hope. In other words, our challenges and struggles are just opportunities for growth, building our strength and our character to help us to evolve into the person that we need to be. Know that just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean that everything is just going to hell and that God has forgotten you. No. If anything, chances are what you're going through is to build you, to help you through something that's going to come later, that's going to be more than you can bear when you get there. But when you finish the trial he has currently for you, makes it easier. This is a philosophy and a possibility for a lot of people, and it happens a lot to the best of us. There are times I find myself going through stuff that even I didn't think was necessary or important. Relationships that I thought should have succeeded that failed. People that I thought I got along with, but it turns out actually hated me, but I still had to deal with them on the daily. They thought they were getting over on me. You know, my pay was being cut. My hours were being cut. They thought that they were getting over on me. But all it was is training me to deal with those kinds of people so that when I found the next job that I had, dealing with these kinds of people in a higher position, I was ready for it. I knew how to handle them. Now, today's episode is going to be a bit shorter than the previous one, but that's perfectly fine. That being said, though, to wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with a few practical tips to combat depression and self-doubt. We'll talk about this again more in a later episode, but one, I want you to stay connected. Reach out to family, friends, or support group. Don't isolate yourself. Isolating yourself is a way that you give the enemy a tie to your life and allows him an opportunity to keep putting you down and knocking you down back on your butt and say, you're no good, you're no better than that person, everything's just going to shit, and you are just the absolute bane of everyone's existence. Okay? Two, practice self-care. Take care of your physical health through exercise, proper nutrition, and rest. I can honestly testify to this that I let my health get out of whack and it I have suffered for it in certain regards whether it's having a micro seizure in my sleep having gaining a hernia or getting hurt or ending up in a hospital you name it these are things that can happen to a regular person you don't have to be doing something out of sorts you don't have to be lifting weights like a lunatic you don't have to get hit by a car you don't have to be involved in a wreck you just be not taking care of yourself Letting your body gain weight in areas that it shouldn't be. Reaching and grabbing for stuff in a way that's not healthy. Picking up stuff using your back when you should be using your thighs and your stomach muscles. Like, or eating proper foods rather than eating junk food and sweets all day, every day, or eating all the time. Believe it or not, eating and over-engorging in food is not healthy either. You know, it's no different than being a glutton, which is a topic we'll talk about later. Three, seek professional health. Okay, there's no shame in seeking help from a counselor or a therapist. That's what they're there for. They're not going to tell anybody what you're doing. They're not going to tell anybody what you said because it doesn't matter to them. Their end goal at the end of that day is to help you. Now, there are some out there that are just in it for money, but a lot of them actually care about their clients. You're not just another paycheck to them. Mostly because if they don't help people and they don't get actual good reviews for helping people, they're not going to get that paycheck. And they understand that. The customers pay them because they know they can actually help them. So if they don't actually help them, they lose out. They're no different than us. They have their fair share of struggles just like we do. Four, for those of you guys who actually believe in the Bible for one and actually pray and believe in God... You should probably engage in more prayer and meditation. If not anything else, spend time in prayer or meditate to find a peaceful and clericable solution. Chances are God might guide you to the right answer to a problem that you have somewhere in the Bible that you wouldn't have even thought was possible. Or he could have someone else show you something in an indirect manner that you wouldn't have realized was a total solution. Number five, set small goals. It's nice to have a grandiose goal like losing 150 pounds in less than a month, but let's be reasonable. Is it possible to do that? Yes, it's entirely possible, but it's not likely, and you're not going to stick to it. We both know that our attention span 
is probably worse than most. Not everybody is exactly the same, but unless you're a super motivated, one track minded person, this is not possible. Because then that would mean that there's no purpose for you listening to this podcast in the first place. Is there? Break down your tasks into manageable steps and celebrate your achievements, no matter how small they are. You lost 20 pounds, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, and you want to celebrate? Yeah, go ahead and celebrate. There's nothing wrong with having one slice, one small slice of cake or a small piece of a chocolate bar. You can do that. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you. But too much of a good thing is a bad thing. You got to remember that. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. There is hope and there is help. So let's support each other and lift each other up, just as the Bible encourages us to do on a day-to-day basis. With that being said, thank you for joining me on Elevate and Reflect with DC. Until the next time, guys, stay strong, stay hopeful, and keep striving for growth. I'm your host, Dark Cancer. Peace.